Hey everyone, and welcome to Using Flame Slater. And if you didn't already watch the install video, go back and check that out. Uh, we're gonna assume you've already done that and you have it in. And so let's jump right in and make a slate template. Uh, so quick recap, once again, Flame Slater takes CSV files, comma separated value files, and will turn them into flame text setups. So if you do a lot of spot versioning, you don't have to type in all your slates yourself. Uh, because hopefully you've gotten something from your client uh, that you can turn into a CSV file that's got spot codes and titles and not have to type all that junk in yourself. So here in Flame, I just made a, a black solid that I called Slate. I'm going to open it up, stick a text effect on it, and then I'm going to load up the default template, or the example template really, that comes with Flame Slater. So I'll hit load, and I'm going to just go into where I installed it, uh, you can do all this from scratch. You can make your own template from scratch, but uh, I'm gonna use the one that comes with it. Go into that uh, this templates directory, and the slate template is just the default one, and that's also a default file name. Uh, it'll always look for one. If you don't specify a template, it'll load that one by default. So if you only ever use one template, you can just call it that and not have to deal with it. Uh, so how it works, is we just you define any fields you want to use on your slate and put them in these percent signs and you can use spaces and everything um, there's two special fields one of them is required the spot code uh, typed just like that spot space code uh, that one's important because it's going to name all the text setup files uh, as your spot code and so those all have to be unique or it's just going to keep writing over the same file. Uh, and then the other one is the date. And this isn't required, but if you use date space now, it'll automatically fill that in with the current date, the current date being whenever you actually generate the slates. Other than that, you can put anything you want in here. And you'll see here in a second when we run uh, Flame Slater, uh, it'll parse all these out of the template and it's gonna ask us to match these up with the columns in your CSV file uh, so it knows what data to put into which fields. So once again, spot code, important. Uh, so I'm gonna exit out of here, and then we're gonna flip to a terminal, and we'll show you how to actually make these things. So I'm gonna go to my terminal, and what I like to do is make these in my projects setup directory. So I'm gonna to go to opt, Autodesk, project, and then my project I'm in now is called testing, and then text, and then flame, and then I'm gonna stick them in here, and you can make other directories in here if you want, like slates, I'm going to there. So uh, I've got this CSV file uh, that I just have, you know, uh, a client title or a client name. I've got spot titles. I've got the codes and I've got the duration, which are the primary things in that template. And then, you know, these are some other columns that are for me when I'm actually making these spots. Uh, but all I've done is save that out uh, as a comma separated value file. This is uh, LibreCalc, which is already in CentOS 7 uh, in your Flame install. It should already be there. Otherwise, you can use Excel. You can use whatever you want. So that's my CSV file, and it's just sitting in my home directory. So back to my terminal here, let's clear this. Uh, I'm in that project slates directory that I made. And if you look back at the install video, I made a link so I could call this thing just by typing Slater. Otherwise, you'll have to type out the whole path. So if I run it just like that with no arguments, uh, it'll come up and sort of tell you how to use it. Uh, so the only required argument is the CSV file name, which should be first, and then you've got all these optional things that come after it. Uh, I'll just explain them really quick. Uh, dash T specifies the template, and you'll see here uh, it's showing you all the templates that it found, and that's directly from the templates directory of the Flame Slater uh, install directory. So if that was in my home directory in Flame Slater, and you'll see here there's this templates folder if I look in there, there's the slate template.ttg uh, that comes with it. And so any of the templates that you make, you can just save in this templates directory and they'll automatically be found and you can tell it what template you want to use just by giving the name. 
uh, without the .ttg. And if you don't specify the template, you can see here it defaults to uh, within the install directory in that templates folder, slate underscore template .ttg. Uh, so that's, again, it's a default name. Uh, so if you don't specify any, it'll always pick that one. Uh, dash D you can do to turn on some debug stuff, which is not really interesting to anyone else probably but me. Uh, dash N and dash X are semi-related. So dash X, we'll talk about that one first, uh, will copy the spot codes uh, to the clipboard with Xclip. Uh, so once again, this is a Linux thing. Uh, if there's a Mac way to do this, uh, I'm all ears. I'm not a Mac person, so I haven't gone looking for any sort of uh, multi-line clipboard management type stuff or anything like that. So if you know of anything, let me know. In any case, if you use dash X, it'll copy all those spot codes to the clipboard. And I'll show you that once we do this. And then if you do dash N, that doesn't make the text setups. So this is handy if you've run this once and you made all your slates, uh, but then you got sidetracked and we're doing other stuff and we're copying and pasting other stuff and you kind of, you know, messed up your, your clipboard and either scrolled some of the old spot codes off or you just want to get rid of the junk. You can run this again uh, and tell it just to recopy all those spots to the clipboard without rewriting or overwriting all of your text setups. So if you do use dash N, it implies you're also using dash X uh, because otherwise it's going to make text setups by default because that's the whole point of this thing, right? And then lastly, dash DS uh, will tell Flame Slater not to strip dashes out of the spot codes on the clipboard. Now, these spot codes don't have dashes, but like some of my clients, the, the spreadsheets that I get, it'll be like, you know, A, B, C, D, dash, one, two, three, four, five, H, you know, whatever the code is, but they put dashes in them. Uh, but places like Extreme Reach, you know, they don't want the dashes in them. And so the spot codes that I copy to the clipboard, uh, Flame Slater will automatically remove the dashes so that when you're using that to rename your clips, uh, the file names will automatically be correct with the dashes. But the actual slate information that's generated in the text setup will have the dashes in them. Uh, so again, that's dash DS. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this once with my CSV file and show you what it does. So I'm going to do Slater. My CSV file is in my home directory uh, called Casasa July. And I'm going to go ahead and specify it even though I don't need to because it's the default template. As I'll say Slate template. And again, you just give it the template name. You don't need the .ttg. It'll do that on its own. And then I'm going to do dash X because I do want to copy the spot codes to the clipboard. Now, the one thing I'll mention uh, right before I hit return here is it's going to clear the clipboard automatically for you when it puts all these on here. So if you've got anything in here that you wanted, uh, it's going to go away. So I'll go ahead and hit return. You'll see here, uh, found the CSV file, found my template file okay, and now it's basically showing me the first row of the CSV file and it's going to ask me here's it's going to come up here with all the field names that it found in that template with the uh, surrounded by the percent signs um, you'll see here uh, it's showing me a one which is if I just hit enter it's going to automatically select column one and then if I hit enter again it'll select column two uh, which you'll see here in a second uh, but you can also type in your own uh, static text if you want for any of these fields. So you can put fields that you don't necessarily have columns for. Uh, for instance, the job number is something that, you know, I put in my slates, but they're never in the CSV file because, hey, the client doesn't know that. And it's the same for every slate. So I can just type in the job number when I'm making them here. Uh, but for now, uh, the client name is indeed column one. And that's a hint is if you put all your columns in the same order as your slate template fields uh, makes it a little easier because you can just hit return a bunch of times. Uh, so I'll hit return, uh, spot name, that in, indeed is column two, spot code, the important one, that is in three, the duration, that is in four, and that's the only fields I've got. And you'll see here, it just spat all these out and copied each one to the clipboard. So if I go over here to Clipper, you'll see there's all my spot codes. 
and they're in reverse order uh, in the sense that the newest is at the top and the oldest is at the bottom. So that was the first slate in that CSV file, and that's the last one, you know, 1430H. That's that last one here. Now, the handy thing about this is that when you're generating... Oops, I accidentally selected some text here, you can see. <laughs> uh, anyway, ignore that. Uh, but the, the first spot, if you're going down that same CSV to generate your spots... Um, when you select one of these pieces of text to actually put it onto the clipboard buffer so that when you hit control V, that's the text that's going to paste. When I hit this, you'll see it'll go away, but you'll see it moved that one up to the top and slid everything else down. So now this will be the second spot. If I click that, that moves up to the top and here's the third spot. So the one you're working on, if you go in sequential order on your grid, will always be this uh, first one at the bottom. Uh, so that makes it a little handy. Uh, now I've sort of ruined that. Uh, so this is an opportunity to show you what the dash N for no text setups. So it doesn't rewrite all these files, even though I haven't really done them anything to them and it doesn't really matter. They could be overwritten, but uh, so I'll just select all the same columns again. And there you'll see it just copied it to the clipboard. Uh, but again, since it clears it first, now everything is all in my clean state and back to normal, assuming I don't screw it up again. So if I do an LS, there's all the text setups from all those slates that it made. So before we jump over and load one of these to make sure it worked, uh, I'm going to show you one other thing on configuring Clipper here uh, so that you can easily name your sequences using this thing. Uh, so, uh, dang it, see, and I just broke it again. Eh, that's all right. Uh, I'm going to go to the little start thing, launcher, whatever it's called, and type in keyboard and go to these global keyboard shortcuts. And then over in the KDE component, flip that over to Clipper. And then I'm going to assign a keyboard shortcut for this open Clipper at mouse position. So if I click that, I'm going to do custom, click in here, and then I, I like to use Control-Alt-V. Uh, and by default, that's some plasma keyboard shortcut. I've already reassigned it in here once, so it's not complaining at me, but yours might. Uh, but uh, I don't know what it is, and I don't use it, so I don't care. Uh, if it does come up with a warning, you can override it, or you, know, you can use any keyboard equivalent you want. Uh, or you can just use Alt-Tab and come out here and click the scissors, but it's a little more inconvenient. And I'll show you why here in a second. Uh, but again, I, I just use Control Alt V. So I'll hit apply and close that. Uh, now I'll pop over here to Flame. And so let's assume this is one of my uh, spots that uh, I'm going to make. Uh, so I'll hover over here, hit N to rename. And now with that still selected, I can do Control Alt V pops up my clipboard list. I can pick my spot, which these are now out of order again, but we'll just do this one, 1130H. I'll click that. Now that's in my paste buffer, and now I can just hit Control V. Uh, now a second ago I said, well, you can hit Alt Tab and then to get your menu bar up and then push your scissors to get this. It's a little inconvenient because let's see if I duplicate this and do another one. So say now I'm making another spot. If I do that, and I pick that. If I click back onto flame, it takes me out of that text edit mode. And it just, whoops, and it just sort of ruins the flow of what you're doing. I think, let's actually try. Uh, if I go back into rename, hit that. And if I alt tab back to flame, it stays that way, but it's just a lot more key pushes. Uh, so that's why I like having it uh, as that hotkey, Control-Alt-V. Uh, so now I'll just open this, load my text. So I'll go into the text effect. I'm going to hit load, and I'll go home into, this is back to my project directory. There's that slates directory that I made, and there's all my stuff. So 1130H, that was the one we did. And ta-da! There, there's all my junk. I don't have to type all that junk in. Uh, so again, you know, I'll just load a different one, 
there's the stuff for that, load that. So really easily, you can obviously just go through and load these tech setups into your spots. So one other thing I'll point out, uh, which I probably should have done earlier, but I forgot. Uh, if we look in here, I've got, I don't know how many rows that was. Oops. Uh, 16 different spots, but you'll see here in my clipboard, I've only got like, I don't know, there's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in here. Uh, so if you configure Clipper, uh, you can come in and tell it how many uh, things should appear on that list. So I generally crank this up to like, you know, it just depends on how many spots you're doing at one time. Uh, I'm going to put like 32 in there is, you know, I have a number I remember from one of the last sets that I did. Uh, so now if I go back actually, and I just rerun that, you'll see here now there's all of them. Uh, if you get too many uh, that to fit in the screen, uh, it'll put a little more dot, dot, dot down here and you'll click that and you'll get a little sub menu that will pop out and it will have the rest. Uh, which is kind of a bitch because it still does that cycling, but it's through that more menu. So it's just a couple more key presses or a couple more mouse clicks. You have to go into more, then go down to the bottom of that list and click the spot code. One other thing uh, I also forgot to mention is this date. Uh, if you remember, um, templates from the raw template, that date now field automatically gets substituted with the current date. You can configure what that date format looks like. Uh, if I go reload one, you'll see I've got it set right now. Whoops, load home, slates, one of those. You'll see I have it set to the day dash uh, three letter month dash four number year. You can change that date format if you want. Uh, if we go back into uh, the actual install directory. You'll see this config.php. If you edit that, there's these two variables. Uh, there's config time zone and config date string. Uh, these are direct things from PHP that get plugged into the, the date function. Uh, so if you look here, uh, I've got two links uh, to the time zones, the valid time zones, uh, which are the, the valid time zone strings that you can put in here. And then here's a link to the page that shows you what this function, which is actually what gets called to make that date, what all these percent %D, percent %H, percent %G, uh, uh, what they do. So if I open that link, you'll see here. Maybe. Hello. Okay, they must be having some issues today. Okay, well, this will look like hell, but uh, you'll see <laughs> here, here's all the different tokens that you can use uh, for formatting that date string however you want. You can put the timestamp in there if you want, it's up to you. Uh, and once again, if I go back here, uh, these time zones, scroll down here, Here's all the major categories. Uh, so, you know, Europe. Oh, okay. Well, the whole thing is broken now. But anyway, you'll get those strings. <laughs> you know, it would be, you know, Europe slash whatever. Um, th the time zone doesn't necessarily even have to be that specific. You know, so long as you're not making spots at midnight, America, Denver will work for most of the U.S. Because it's really uh, just using that to figure out the day. Okay, so that's it. Now I'm done.